Hey guys, welcome back to Almost Inevitable Design. My name is still PK, uh, and today we're gonna actually learn how to create a custom plugin. Now, a lot of people find ways of making, if you make a lot of websites as your job, um, then there's it's good to have like a boilerplate uh, setup that you can easily uh, install your preferred list of plugins or whatever theme you need, whatever it is, extra features, extra snippets of code, everything, uh, it would be great if you had a way to uh, replicate that or duplicate that in your new build because you're used to your workflow, right? So um, there's a couple of ways that I've seen people do that. And one of them is like building, if you're using something like WP Engine, you can actually make a, a subfolder instance and then just duplicate that and keep uh, reusing that but that means that you'll have to um, not only keep updating this basic build if you replicate that somewhere else um, and then in that new replication parameters are different uh, your build has to be different then you can't actually do that sometimes um, or you can have like a zip folder of all the plugins that you need and then just upload that into the the new site and then just unzip it there and all that kind of stuff what I do is um, I used to use child themes. I used to use my own custom child theme. Now, regardless of what you're doing, it's good to have a child theme, all right? Whether, even if you're just using the builder, the child theme holds extra theme customizations, so it's good to have a child theme regardless. And it takes only a minute to do, and you, you can save a lot more stuff in there. Anyways, anyways. Um, you can use a child theme and you can have that child theme be the basic boilerplate that you can use. And it can actually have the child theme um, allow you to install a bunch of plugins automatically and all that kind of stuff. Um, I started using Oxygen and now I'm playing around with Breakdance. So they are just uh, plugins. They're just plugins and they actually can, they actually can disable the theme. So I've, then moved on to just using a plugin. Now, even if I do use a theme, for example, um, whatever other theme, whatever other website it is, even if I use a theme, I'll have a child theme and that child theme can take care of all the templating stuff for me. The plugin I now keep using because that can help me with um, all the extra functions, right? So I can put everything into one plugin, upload that, and I'm ready to do things the way I'm used to. Um, so yeah, cause, um, plugins, themes can take, child themes can take care of, um, extra templates like, um, single post templates, product templates, that kind of stuff, custom post type templates. Uh, whereas, uh, plugins, you can, you can add a lot of stuff, but you can't do the theme templating inside the plugin itself. Um, uh, in this case, so you can, but there's a lot more stuff that work goes into that. So I'll just do that. All right. Anyways. Um, I'm going to show you, so this is um, a sandbox. I'm going to actually show you how to make your own and you'll have the download. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, check down below and you'll see a link to my website, which is almostinevitable.com and you'll see the link to the post and in that post, you'll see the download button. You can download um, the plugin. I'm going to go with plugin because I think that's the best place to start and it doesn't disrupt anything and whatever you use, whether you use Oxygen, Breakdance, um, Elementor, Divi, Beaver, whatever it is, you having one extra plug in there will take care, will we'll still work on every system, okay? So I'm gonna go with the plugin. I'm gonna give you that pretty empty plugin. I'll show you how to customize that, okay? All right, so just to show you what this can do, all right, so this is the custom plugin that I put together. I'm gonna compress that, and you can see the zip file there. Uh, and I'm gonna upload it and add new. Oh yeah, by the way, um, 2022 disables the theme file editor and the plugin file editor and the favicon. It's not favicon, it's favicon. If you look it up in the dictionary, I real I learned that a few months ago. Been saying favicon for years, uh, decades. Anyways. I'll go with 2021. That gives us that. See, everything comes back. Uh, so 2022, I'm not used to that yet. 
full site editing with Gutenberg, not use that. Um, and I'm just leaving it like that. Okay, so uh, we'll add new. We'll add a new plugin. That custom plugin that we just had. I'll upload that. Now this is localhost, so I can actually just go in the file system and just add it in there in the Finder. But I'm just going to do this to show you how it works in the browser. Okay, so custom plugin. Drop that in there and activate. Once this is activated, I get this. It requires the following plugins, and I can start installing the plugins. And I have my I have my own list of plugins here. An image optimizer, ACF. I always use ACF Pro. I'm not going to include this when you download it because that's a pro version that comes with my account. Yeah, I can't. I'm not doing that. I can package it up with other stuff, but I'm not selling this either. And yeah, you can just do. Yeah, I'm, I'm not adding that in there. Anyways, um, ACF columns. Uh, I, I I need columns. I use that a lot. Uh, you can add a redirection that'll come in later. Easy to upload SVGs and SEO plugin. You can add a bunch more if you want to. Whatever it is, it'll be here. And all you need to do is just do stuff like this and install them. They will install. So yeah, um, just leave it like that. Everything will install. And then after that, just flip the switch and um, activate everything and you're done. So this I've found is <clears throat> one of the quickest ways to set things up. And you can actually make some plugins be required. All right, you can, so it'll be mandated by your plugin that this extra plugin needs to be activated. Okay, so uh, all I need to do now is take the ones that are installed, I'll activate them, and I'm done. That's it. And you can see here <clears throat> that there they are. Cool, right? So I'm gonna give you this plugin to download. I'll show you how this works and I'll show you how to edit the stuff so you can make it do what you want, okay? All right, so here we are. Now, what I'm using here is I'm using something called TGM plugin activation, all right? TGM plugin activation. It looks like this and if you wanna make this by yourself from this from scratch, um, you can go here, get the download. So what this is is uh, you can you can add whatever um, folder you want. So that's the name of the folder it's going to live in. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't change anything. Um, add function prefix. It's good to have a prefix because you don't want your functions to clash with other functions that has the same name. Like if you have a generic function name, you need to add like a unique prefix in front so it'll uh, it won't clash so add that and then whatever your theme or plugin is going to be named it really doesn't matter here um, if you're going to include it in a theme or if you're going to if you're going to include it in a child theme if you're going to include it in a plugin that's that's what you check to to that's what you click to get it to uh, show up in the right place the reason is because if you're in a plugin the directory when you install um, files will look like directory name file. All right. If you're in a child theme, it'll be get template, get style sheet directory. And if it's in a theme, it'll be get template directory. Okay. I think I got that right. Did I get that right? Get style sheet directory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, if it's in a child theme, it'll be child themes override the parent theme style sheet just by having that style.css. So they have a uh, get style sheet directory. And if you're making your own theme, it doesn't really matter. So it just, it is the template directory. And you can see that, um, you can see that here, right there, right? Okay, cool. All right, so that's, that's not that important. What you need to do is once you've generated, it will download and you'll get something like you see right here, all right? And the way that you actually use this is you take that file, put it in that, theme, child theme, or plugin, and then you take this example, PHP, and modify it to um, work, right? So you're actually loading that class TGM plugin activation plugin dot activation dot PHP, this file. This file is the one that takes care of 
that whole thing, everything up here you see, you saw here, all this kind of stuff, that cool stuff where you can install plugins and it has that whole interface to do that, that comes from this plugin, all right, uh, this, this file, all right, so um, you're gonna add that into, um, into the plugin folder right there, like I did here, and then you're gonna add the functions and all the parameters that you need into the code here okay into this code all right now um, if you look at example.php it actually shows you with commenting how to edit these things so you can you can just read this and it'll help so that that can take care of it um, but here i'm just going to show you how that works um, if it is a file inside your library all right if it is inside your library all you need to do is make well, I, I made a library folder and inside that is a plugin and then it has that. So if you if you want to include like premium plugins, you got to download directly from the developer. So that's why you might need this. And I use ACF Pro on pretty much every build, which is why this is uh, required. It says required true. Okay, yep. Uh, and uh, include it in the get the right uh, um, what is it file directory correct and then it will show up all right so for example like some people might want to do this with um i don't know layer slider or uh whatever slider i don't know uh that kind of stuff where you can't actually uh download it from the wordpress repo you can actually you can only just have that file there you can include it like this all right so from this comma to array you duplicate that and you can make a new one you gotta change everything. The name, this name is what you see here. And that slug is what will happen when you unzip it and you get to see, uh, not here, uh, you get to see the plugin folder. All right. Um, yeah, see that plugin folder? That That is uh, the slug. All right. So that guy. All right. Now, um, <clears throat> We're not we're not doing that here. I'm not I'm not including that. So, all right. And this will be disabled. It will not have it. You know what? I'll just include the non-pro one. All right. Just because that makes you know because if you're downloading this, I mean you know. All right. So I'll just do that. Uh, anyways, so the other ones the the other ones can be from the repo. All right. So let's look at what it looks like in the repo. All right, so WordPress, WordPress.org, and you will see here in the plugins, oops, ah, now I have patterns, so that's, there we go. Um, ooh, what's this? No code page builder for beautiful performance-based content. Cool, let's say, oh, ooh, I think this might be like latex, is it? All right, I'm just going to I'm going to I'm going to add this as a plug required plugin. So you can see up here it says K A T X, Katex. I guess, right? So, uh, we're going to duplicate that one, right? From the comma to the array. Uh, I use this is this this code editor is Sublime. And in Sublime, if you want to duplicate what you've selected, it is Command Shift D, Control Shift D on Windows. I don't know. Command Shift D, and you duplicate it. All right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in Ktex right there, and that title there that goes in here. Yep. Save that, and if I Refresh this, you will. No. Oh, I remember why. <laughs> this is this is in the plugin that I'm giving you. I gotta do this over here. Very stupid. Um. All right, let's do it right here. <laughs> That's why. Of course. Yeah. There's no weird reason. It's yeah, there you go, right? So I can just install it from here if I wanted to. 
So yeah, there's no weird reason. It's there. There is a reason. Like computers don't lie. Anyways, um, so yeah, that's what you can do with your plugin. Uh, and you can actually you can do whatever you want. Like redirection, I always use that redirection plugin, the the one with the plants. Uh, so I use that SEO framework. I I might as well just use Yoast. It really doesn't matter. Or if you want to use Rank Math or whatever it is you you like, use that. Put that in there. You know how to add it now, right? Yeah. Like if you were to do Rank Math. You could do it with that SEO by rank math and put that in the slug and take that title, put that in here in the name and that's it. Easy peasy, right? So that's great. Don't touch anything else. Just leave it as is and you're good. Now, I think custom plugins should be helpful, not just with bulk installing plugins, but also with other stuff like um, adding CSS, um, adding code snippets here and there, um, adding fonts, all that kind of stuff. For example, a lot of people need to add uh, Facebook pixels, uh, Google Analytics codes, stuff like that. Everywhere, not everywhere, on the site. Like it should be in the header, it should be, um, it's either in head or if you have a Google Tag Manager, GTMs come with two pieces of code. One goes in the head, one goes in the opening of the body, for example. So that's all over here. I've added this here just so you can use it. Um, now, this is PHP, which is why if you need to add extra HTML, you need to parse it out of PHP, all right? So if you were to add HTML, um, this is how you parse it out. You know what, I'll just do this for you and you just, anybody who knows PHP enough will know what to do with this. And if you don't, you can just drop it in here and you'll, you, yeah. So um, you can add your code in there and it'll show in the header, in the head, all right? And this is in the opening body tag. So I'll, I'll do this again as well. Um, oh wait, this is, um, this is in the, this is in the sandbox. Anyways, I'll do that. I'll do that in the one that I give you as well. So you can drop your code in here, like the Google tags, and it will work, all right? That means you don't need to install extra plugins for that, which gives you um, less plugins to manage. This is all you need to do. That plugin is adding a lot of fluff over that. So it takes care of that, all right? Now, you can see here, I have like SAS1, SAS2. They're actually CSS files, but um, they come from SAS, so. Uh, one is fonts.css and one is main.css. I always use main.css as my um, SAS rendered file, so that's why that's named like that. Uh, they are inside. They are inside the plugin. All right. So I'll show you fonts. Um, I have added the elegant icons uh, file here. You can actually load it if you wanted to. Just take uncomment it and it'll load all right um i left it like that but that's what you can do if you want to add custom plugin uh, custom fonts you can drop them in this folder duplicate this change the name change the file name change the format probably if it's a ttf or an otf do that and it'll work all right so that's how you can load fonts um on site not through google or um adobe through a script, which you can add if you wanted to in here as well, okay? So you can load your fonts like that. Um, now, this, now, if your builder uses its own font uploading system, then use that, don't use this, because um, if you need to rely on that, that means that most likely you won't be writing all the CSS yourself, you won't be typesetting all that um, separately, you'll just select the font from the the builder then don't do it here okay do it in the builder upload it to the builder all right and that'll create that extra font choice for you okay so do that don't do it here and then ask me like why where is it like because it won't this is loaded separately in code okay all right now the main.css there's nothing here but if you wanted to write any css do it in here and then uncomment this out all right do that this main.css will load, okay? Now, the, the reason why it's loading like this and the reason why it's enqueued like this is because now if a 
caching plugin takes everything, caches it all together, minifies it and aggregates it, it will take it from here because it knows what it's, what's, what's being loaded, okay? Um, I left the relax, the parallax um, JavaScript library here and the custom, custom, custom one dot JS is a blank one, blank. So you don't need to worry about that. Relax.min is here. Um, if you want to do parallax stuff, it's just there. I just downloaded it. I use that often, so I just left it there. Okay, so all you need to do if you want to load, if you want to load like um, custom JS, just uncomment that, add your JS in there, and you'll be good. Okay, so that's that's pretty much it. That's how you can make your own custom plugin. It is a very convenient way of doing it. And once you upload it and you get used to getting your own set of plugins to run, I've been using this method for years and it is such a nice, easy, reliable way of setting up your own development environment really quick, really well. So I hope you like it. All right, hope you like it. Um, oh, by the way, before we go, um, of course, YouTube, I'm not. I'm now going to start saying please like and subscribe, all that kind of stuff. Hope you do. Uh, another thing is, I have a Discord. I have a Discord channel. You'll see it in the comments. Please join me. Please join me and a lot of um, designers, developers all around the world. Um, I'm always on Discord. If you say something, I'll probably reply as long as I'm not sleeping. So if you have any questions, if you have any, if you want to keep up with any updates, because I'm going to come out come out with a YouTube course soon. So keep a lookout for that um, and um, join us on the Discord, all right? So download this plugin, have fun. Oh, almost forgot, change the names here, all right? Change the names to your name, all right? And your, your domain, and that's it. You can even change the plugin name as well. Don't worry about the, don't worry about the folder. The folder doesn't really matter. The slug doesn't matter. This is what matters. So just change that to my, my custom plugin and that's what it will show it looks great it looks like you've done a great you have your own custom code stuff it looks great so um please do that change it to fit yourself uh fit your development and all that F fit your brand and um hope you hope you put this to good use all right so ask me questions in the discord ask me questions in the comments on youtube or on the blog uh, where the tutorial is the tech typed out tutorial is or ask me questions on the facebook a post that you see this in wherever it is just type something out i'll reply and i'll see you around all right take care thanks bye